Tanzania, Lord have mercy. You know why we are slacking in Nigeria and so many other countries? Zeman is doing wonders. Have you heard about the new president of Tanzania? They call him the bulldozer. And rightfully so. Because the man is bulldozing corruption, laziness, and overspending among government officials. Ladies and gentlemen, meet the man that gladdens my spirit. I hope that all African presidents are watching. Well, they're probably not watching, but anyway, I hope they can learn a few lessons from the man, Dr. John Magufuli. He's a farmer's son whose first real job was a school teacher, and then he educated himself as an industrial chemist and eventually became Tanzania's minister of public works before winning the election in November of last year. <laughs> yeah, just last year. You would not believe all that the man has done. The first thing he did was to suspend the Independence Day celebration. He said, what are we celebrating when people are dying of cholera? I, I was like, whoa, 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 how many people have died of cholera in Tanzania? What, 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 what? 74 people? How many people have died in Nigeria? My father and my God. Thousands of people. Boko Haram has killed thousands of people in Nigeria and we did not suspend any party or ceremony. Even our new president was in Ogun State. You know, celebrating in Ogun State after the incident that happened in Dalori. Meanwhile, a president canceled Independence Day celebration because like 70 something people were killed by cholera. So they were supposed to spend 4 billion Tanzanian shillings on that ceremony. But Magufuli said, no, 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 no. You see, that money should be used for the expansion of a 4.3 kilometer section of the road from Morocco to Mwenge in order to ease traffic congestion. Tell them, tell them that is what I'm talking about. Now for the Independence Day ceremony, the man commanded that everybody, that people should get out of their houses and go and clean their streets and all the corner corners in order to stop the spreading of cholera. He didn't stop the himself came out mr president himself he got on the streets cleaning up the streets my eyes got big when i saw that video when we nominated uh, dr magufoli to be our candidate we knew uh, the style the type of leadership that he represents we needed uh, you know his style and his way of uh, doing things we expected uh, him to do exactly what he's doing when some indian officials even those that are not even presidents they're not president when they will be feeling pompous eh? because of what he did his own officials also got on the street cleaning up the street imagine what will happen the day we see oga faraki with the broom or oga dino melaye or senator ben bruce ah, that man's very very loud very loud on, on twitter anyway the man banned all foreign travels by public officials public servant except when it is essential travel and they must get permission from him or from the chief secretary in fact on the 21st of november of last year a group of 50 officials were going on a tour of commonwealth countries the president cut down the list from 50 people to four people and he saved the government 600 million tanzanian shillings recently during the commonwealth conference that president uhuru kenyatta attended alongside other senior government officials his tanzanian counterpart slashed the size of delegation to the conference from 55 to just four thereby saving millions of shillings money they would have spent on tickets accommodation and per them you know no more traveling abroad for all these officials he said well the high commissioners and the ambassadors and the embassies abroad should be representing tanzania when they are invited <laughs> which makes a lot of sense why are they abroad if we also have to be going abroad you know no more first class and business class travels for all officials except mr president the vice president and the prime minister only three people no more business class flying that means they have to fly economy oh my god oh my god oh my god oh my god some of them will collapse eh? reminds me of thomas sankara of a burkina Faso. no be so yes that's what i'm talking about the man has cancelled all meetings no more workshops and conferences by government officials and public servants inside and uh, fancy hotels he said no more inside fancy hotels he said that every ministry has ministerial boardrooms no be so use that one for your meetings and that is what they are now doing eh? soon after coming into office mr president went to muhibili hospital unannounced he just walked there and he walked through all the terrible parts of the hospital that they would normally hide from officials all the dirty places all the places where people were sleeping on the floor where equipment were not working after seeing many equipment not working and some patients on the floor the man fired the director of the hospital he fired all the hospital board members and he ordered that all the machines that were not working must be repaired within two weeks if not he would fire the new director as well apparently all the doctors knew that the machines were not working but instead of repairing them or asking the director to repair them they were referring patients to their own private hospitals <laughs>
hospitali zote za private zinafanya kazi. Kwa hiyo za private zote zinafanya kazi. Sita scan za hospitali za private zote zinafanya kazi. Za hospitali ya hapa Muhimbili zote hazifanyi kazi. I know that something like that is going on in Nigeria as well. No so anyway, he gave them two weeks to fix the machines. But guess what happened? The machines were repaired in three days. Three days. And so it is possible to repair this. And then when they opened parliament, they planned a state dinner that would cost 300 million shillings. And when he heard about it, he said, you see this 300 million shillings, make it 25 million. Whatever we can eat with that, we will manage. <laughs> now the rest of the money, he said, they should use it to buy hospital bed for that hospital that he visited, you know, Muhibili Hospital. So they bought 300 brand new beds and mattresses and 600 bed sheets from that money. Can you imagine? They would have eaten with that money and that would have been the end of it. Now they have 300 brand new beds to admit people into the hospital. By the way, he said that why were engineers using V8 engine vehicles when they were supposed to be using pickups? He said that is more suitable for their jobs. So now they've changed all the vehicles. No more sitting allowances for officials. He said, how the hell are you paying allowances for a job which you have a monthly salary? That also applies to members of parliament, by the way. No more sitting allowances. It was so funny when I heard that the day after he was sworn in, uh, the state house officials were showing him around, you know, his new residence but he was not really impressed by that he said he decided to take a walk to the ministry of finance he got there and he told them to get their acts together he asked why some employees were not in office yet and i heard that since that day the traffic jam in the mornings has really really increased because people no longer show up late to work after mr president's visit now he ordered that no more tax exemptions for the big people everybody must pay taxes including the big people the other day when he was going to officially open parliament Instead of him to fly the 600 kilometers, the man decided to drive. He drove the whole 600 kilometers from that to Dodoma. He has reduced his own convoy. He even reduced the presidential delegation that travels with him. He surprised everybody when he chose a female vice president. All the big boys were shocked. They were like, what? It's a new day in Tanzania. And then he chose a prime minister that nobody has heard about. They said that this guy has a reputation for hard work and no corruption. All the big guys that thought that they would be prime minister are still in shock by the way so after his visit to the ministry of finance and that hospital without announcing all the other ministries have fastened their belts everybody is now hard working including a sector that people consider very very corrupt that is the port where people normally pay bribe to get their stuff i heard that it has suddenly become the most efficient place no loads are missing things are done quickly and you cannot get your container without paying bribe and finally all individuals and firms that bought state companies that were privatized they've been told to either get to work or hand over that sector with immediate alacrity hand it over back to the government some of them i heard that they've not done anything in like 20 years but now all of a sudden they're all awake doing stuff the man has literally pressed the reset button in tanzania it's a new day in tanzania his motto is hapakazi true some of you that are not from Tanzania, you probably don't understand. <laughs> don't worry, I will teach you. What that means is here, all we do is work. We serve nothing else. Yes, his people are happy. Of course, the big people are not that happy, especially the corrupt ones, you know. But all the small people, like myself, they're very, very happy. Ugandans want their president to be like him. They wrote an article about it. South Africans want their president to learn 10 things from Tanzanian president. And of course, I want my president to learn from this man, three Bosa, so the president of Tanzania, Bosa, 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 eh? Now having said that, my old guy, we are very happy, we love you. <laughs> um, you started well, please continue to do, do not disappoint mama. If you keep up like this, very soon Tanzania will become the best country in Africa. No be so, you guys are not doing anything, guess what, I'm just keeping it real.